Alright, hello everybody, and welcome to two of my Java game tutorial. Um, this is going to be a quite interesting, up kind of like a re-upload of the first video, because the way we were, do we were doing it there, it wasn't very effective, and it wasn't going to work. So I've decided to redo it. I found a much simpler way. It's just one class to do everything that we did before. Um, way less code, way easier to understand. And I'm not actually going to write this code, I'm just going to paste it in, but you can get the source code for it down below. And don't worry, I will explain everything. So you want to create a new Java class, call it main. In the same package that we had all the other stuff in, you can just remove everything else, and then paste what I gave you in the pastebin. There we go. So let's, let's go through what this does. So the frame... The J frame is pretty much the frame of the window, as I described in the last video, I believe. So, we can change the title. Uh, let's change this to title. <laughs> so, what this does is it creates a new J frame with the title. Then it creates a new game, which I'll explain soon. Then it adds the this game, so this, this main class, which is the J panel. So it adds that J panel to the game sets the size of it and the sets it to visible so then you can actually see it super simple and then frame dot set default close operation pretty much what it does is it makes sure that when you hit the x button in the top right it actually closes so then it calls game dot init and game dot run so let's see it calls a new main this will pretty much create a new instance there's no constructor of any sort down here it calls the init which currently does not have anything and then it calls game.run, which pretty much is in an infinite loop until you close it. Um, it ticks. Um, repaint pretty much is a JPanel's way of calling this paint method. As you can see, this means it's overrided. So it's o overrided from the JPanel class, which means that every time you call repaint, even though it doesn't exist, it's part of the JPanel class. So it automatically calls paint. And it does all this and this is what it looks like so far so if we save it and we run it boom so th we actually have a working vin window as you can see here we fill a rectangle and I think that is pretty darn cool so now what are we gonna do this episode this episode we're going to create game states so a game state is pretty much uh, a menu in the game for example you could have the help menu you could have the uh, the title screen, you could have the game. So those are all states, and that's what we're going to be creating in this episode. A way to easily switch between them. And anyways, let's jump into it so you can ex I'll explain as I go. So we want to create a new class, and this is going to be called game state. Make sure you put it in a, cl a new package called game state. There we go and just hit finish. Now this class is going to be abstract. If you want to learn, if you don't know what abstract means and you want to learn about it, look down in the description. I will link an awesome um, description of it. So yeah, if you want to read more about it. So anyways, now this abstract class is going to need a public abstract void in it. Now, as you can see, this doesn't have a body. That's the thing with abstract classes. They, the thing is, abstract uh, classes, they don't have to be initialized. So this, doesn't have to, this method does not have to be initialized. It does have to be initialized when you extend the game state, but you'll see that. You'll see that. Hopefully you understand that. I'm going to create, create another public abstract void tick. And we're going to create a final public abstract void oh we want to make sure we spell that right render with a graphics object so for this tutorial it's graphics 2d there's no big difference you don't have to worry about it but um, anyways so as you can see I created a body which gives us an error because it's abstract so we just put a semicolon there and make sure we import graphics 2d and boom we have our game state done so now Let's start things off by creating a new class. This is going to be the play state. Now you can hit finish. 
Now the play state is of course the game state. So up here we want to type in extends game state. Now extends is a, is a simple way of saying you're my parent so I will take everything from you. As you can see it takes all these um, methods here. Now the thing is we if, if these if these were an abstract we wouldn't have to create them. If they weren't here, you could still do playstate.init because it extends the game state, so it'd be calling the game states in it. Anyways, so these can be empty for now, um, but for the render, we just want to make sure it's working. So we'll do g. And here, will the string will be um, playing the it's going to be at zero and at zero. There we go. I would that will dr eventually draw a string. So now we have to f make a way to handle these uh, manager for all of these. So it's pretty simple. Just call it game state manager. Now what this is going to have to have is it's going to need a game state. Game state cur game state. Now. What we want to do is when we call the constructor for this, so all you have to do is type game, then control space, and this menu comes up. We want to select the first one and hit enter. So now, in here we want to set cur game state equal to um, a new play state. And there we go. But whoa, 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 wait a minute. This is a game state, not a play state. Well, that's super simple. Wh like, why does it work? Why does it work? It's super simple. It's because of this. It extends game state. So it's 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 like the game state's child. So it, it'll happily take it in, right? It's like, hey, you're part, you're, you're one of me, so, so I'll accept you. <laughs> so that's a simple explanation. Now we're going to need a public void tick. A public void render. Now remember this takes a graphics 2D object. And then well, let's see what is the problem? We didn't <laughs> enter void. Whoopsies. And then we have to create one final one up here which is going to be public void init. So now we have all these. So what we want to do is we kind of call the cur game states. We're going to do control v and game cur game state dot init. And now we can look at switch to game state, but it's always going to init it. Same for the uh, tick, and same for the render. Now we want to make sure we do Control Shift O and import everything. If you have the error on the graphics 2D, make sure it's imported. Now we want a way to switch the state. We could just do we could just make the game state static, but that would not work very well. I'll explain why in a reason. So we do public avoid switch state, and then this is going to take in a game state new state. And now, oh, let me quickly fix my keyboard. So now, what we can do is we can do cur game state equals new state. Now we we also need to do one last thing. We want to call then cur game state dot init. I'll tell you why in a minute. So that about does it for our game states. Now we need a way to call the init, the tick, and the render method. So let's, I'm going to quickly remove this. So let's create a game state manager GSM. And then down here in the init method, we're going to do GSM equals a new game state manager. There we go. So, that does that. Now, that pretty much initializes everything, but 
we also want to call gsm.init because remember we have that method. So now here it is. The thing is, every time you switch the game state, it does not recall the init because this init only gets called once. So every time we switch it, we have to make sure we call the init because it's not going to get called any other way. So there you go. Simple reason. So now we're going to make sure we do gsm.tick in the tick method and down here in the paint method which is the same as render we're going to do also do gsm dot render and here we're going to put in our graphics to object and boom we are finished so now if we run this it doesn't show anything but why does it do that because we need to set the color of what it's rendering so let's go back into the play state and what we'll do is we'll g set color sets the color of the, the magical paintbrush color dot black there we go so now if we run it again oh it renders but it's for some reason it's out of the screen we can fix that next time but for now all we have to do is we can just set the y to say 20 oh no not 0 20 to just 20 and make sure you save it and boom, look at that. Now it's rendering our play state. Just like that, we have our game state manager done. We did it. Um, so that will be it for this episode. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.